Now there's something that I love a lot. It's called sauna and I'm going to share it really quickly with you. How many love sauna here? Yeah. I know some of you are crazy about sauna. Ivan loves sauna. Pastor Ilya is pretty, pretty savage at it. I was at someone, I'm not going to mention the name this time. They're not here. Any, I, think, I don't think the person is here. I was at someone's place uh, last week and, and I went to sauna. And something that always happens when I enter a sauna is that I remember my roots because I'm half Finnish, okay? My dad is 100% Finnish, but he lives in Sweden. I don't speak Finnish. I've visited Finland a couple of times only. I have nothing, no connection with Finland. But when you get into a sauna, one of the first things I will tell people is that, hey guys, I'm Finnish, just so you know, half Finnish. And did you know where the word sauna came from? Does anyone know where the word sauna came from? It's Finnish, people of God. Sauna literally comes from Finnish. It could have been my great, great, great grandfather that invented sauna. And that's the story that I tell people in sauna. And every single time the same thing happens. They're like, oh, so you're pretty used to it then, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm used to it. Let's do it. And every time it ends up the same way and I end up regretting mentioning anything about my Finnish heritage. Because people here in this place, whew, they go hot, man. They go so hot. And, and, and I, I realized when I was there at my brother's place, I realized that, that sauna is actually very similar to deliverance. Okay? Listen to me now. Sauna is similar to deliverance. Because what happens is like you are a sauna. And then there are people living inside of that sauna. And when you begin to put more water on the stones, the temperature in the sauna increases to the point that they begin to be like, oh, I can't stay here. I can't stay. I have to go. I have to go. Let me out. Let me out. I have to go. That's literally the process of deliverance. What she was going through here is literally God was pouring. Every time she went to the prayer closet, she didn't know exactly what she was doing, but she was pouring more water on those stones, increasing the temperature more and more and more. And finally, those demons, they couldn't stay. They, they, all they could think of is how comfortable it would be to leave that place. Hallelujah. So uh, one last point here. My friend, Pastor Ilya, he's a savage at sauna. Anytime we do sauna, all of us are like half dead and he's just talking in there. Everything is so good and he doesn't even notice that it's like, what, 140 degrees, 150, I don't even know. Is it 200 degrees? I don't even know. But, but he's, he's, he's insane. So, so we will be like, hey, it's time to go out. But he will be able to stay much longer than others. Deliverance is the same way. Some of you have demons they are very experienced to the heat. They have gone to many sauna sessions in different churches. So when you come, you're like, yeah, I, I can stand this temperature. Yeah, I can resist it. I'm going to stay in here. You know what? Even my dear friend, Pastor Ilya, even the most professional sauna bathers, they have a limit. Where they too are going to be, oh no, it's too hot, I'm getting out of here. Today is the day of deliverance. And what we're going to do, we're not going to splash a little bit, we're going to pour buckets. And we're going to get that temperature up real quick because we don't have time. We're not going to warm them up, we're just going to splash it. Pour the fire of God until all the demons can think about is how comfortable it would be to leave. They will even leave by themselves. They're like, I'm going, I'm going. Thank you. I'm leaving. I'm out. Hallelujah. Praise God. So get ready. The fire of God is burning already. I know that this is not the service, but fire of God can touch you too. Just because you're here doesn't mean that you're not going to receive deliverance today. Pastoral team, we're on fire today. Praise God. I'm going to talk about to, to the people of God, those of us who might have gone through deliverance. And you need to equip yourself up so that you are able to defend yourself against demonic forces. Demons keep attacking. Just because you receive deliverance doesn't mean demons stop attacking. They'll attack you until the day you leave this earth. Okay? So the question is, how do you prepare yourself? How do you defend yourself against it? What I'm going to talk about today is our firewall. So the word firewall, before I go too far, the word firewall was a word that was used in construction. It still is today. Where between houses or between apartments in a building, 
it, the wall is created of a different material to protect the people in the next apartment. So if a fire breaks out in this apartment, the people in this apartment aren't going to burn to death. The firewall will keep them safe so they can stay inside until the fire has been quenched or, you know, to get out through a window or something like that. In the middle of the 1980s, the term firewall was used in technology and has been used more commonly like that ever since. You can see on the picture what a firewall is. A firewall is something that protects a local area network from malicious traffic from the outside, okay? And I believe that God Almighty has given us the tools to have a very functioning firewall in our spiritual journey. However, if we don't install the firewall, it's not going to do much work. You need to install it, you need to configure it, and you need to enable it so that when attacks come, the firewall will shield those attacks out. How many are ready to listen to the word today? Are you ready? Praise God. I, I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, there are, uh, for those of us who are technolo te technologically gifted, we know that there's about three types of firewalls today. Three different categories of firewalls. And first of all, a computer has 65,000 ports. That means there's 65,000 entrances into a computer through the internet. A firewall closes off all the ones who are idle so that no virus can sneak in when you don't notice. Let me tell you, human beings spiritually has about as many ports as a computer has probably. Probably up towards 60,000 different ways, okay? I'm not trying to scare you here, but there is a solution, okay? And the first, uh, there's three types of, of firewalls, and I'm going to go through those things and explain how you can implement that in your spiritual journey. The first one is what is called a hardware firewall. It's an actual device that you plug in your internet before you connect your computer. Computer. This device will stop the malicious traffic from entering, okay? It's an actual device. You can look at it, you can touch it, you can see it, but you can't understand how it's stopping invisible viruses from entering, but you can see it. As Christians, we have a hardware firewall as well. There's something that God has given us that we can touch, that we can see, that we can read, and that we can use. Anyone know what it is? Come on, it's the Word of God. This is your hardware firewall right here. You need to get into this. This is, but the thing is, just having the Word of God isn't going to protect you. You need to actually install it in your life for it to function properly. It's not enough to just read it occasionally. It's not enough to just know something about it, having it. Some people sleep with their Bible under their pillow. I mean, to some degree that might help, but it's better having it in your heart. It's more effective. I want to tell you, the Bible is many things. The Bible is a sword. The Bible is, to me, it's a charcuterie board. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's what you use to break your spiritual fast. Uh, you know, in the morning you, you eat breakfast and, and that's right here. It's a sword, it's a lamp, it's many things to us. But in this case, I would like to say that this is an instruction manual. This is an instruction manual to God's heart. The Holy Bible is an instruction manual to a successful life. What are you looking for today? Do you want to have a fruitful marriage? This is the instruction manual. Do you want to walk in freedom that God has provided for you? This is the instruction manual. Do you want to walk in the authority that God has given to you? This is the instruction manual. It's right here. So I want to use this prop here for you. This is a cleaner. This is something that many of us use. You can clean your countertops. This is actually a stain remover. So you use it on your couch or your carpet or something when the animals... Your, your dog or your cat or your kids have eased themselves, you know, done something on the carpet and, and, and your kids isn't part of your animals. It's like your animals is one, so don't misquote me here, okay? <laughs> your pets and your kids, okay? So the thing is with this, it's pretty straightforward. Most people know how to use it. You spray it on and you use it. But look here at the back. There's actually a lot of instruction manuals here. Everything... Everything that you buy today, including the food that you eat, 
If you order from Ikea, you're going to get a big old instruction manual how to assemble stuff. And most people, they don't read it properly. They're like, oh yeah, look at this. Spray on the surface to be clean, wipe with hard Okay, that sounds good. Spray, okay, direction testing. Okay, yeah, I can do that. And then you end up becoming a viral video on YouTube because you didn't follow the instructions that were provided. Now, if you read the instructions here and you even know how to use it, but you do like that, okay, well, that's good. That's good. I know at least what it says. You don't use it. It's not going to function. So it's not enough to just read it and understand it. The secret to installing the hardware firewall in your spiritual life is found in James 1 verse 22. I'm going to read it for you right now. Many of you know it. This is a powerful verse right here. Whew. Anointing of God is up on the stage, I'm telling you. I wonder if it's down there too, but here, whoa. <laughs> Praise God. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. James 1 verse 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Now, many of us, we are pretty handy. If, if your wife orders something from Ikea, you, you, you'll figure it out. For some of us, if it comes without an instruction manual, we're doomed. So like me, I've tried many times to assemble like closets and chairs and tables. And I mean, there's always something to assemble basically in our house. So, you know, I don't know how it is in your house. Maybe it's a season, you get over it. I hope so. Uh, but yeah, I'm on assembly duty in our house. And if I don't use that instruction manual, I might get like, it might kind of look like what it's supposed to do. You just look at the picture like, oh, yeah, okay. I don't know what this, this is extra. <laughs> and then by the time you use the table or something, it comes crashing down because you don't, didn't follow the instruction manual that was provided. I want to encourage you today. If you read the word of God, this instruction manual to God's heart, but you don't apply it to your life, it's like you're busy mopping up water without turning off the tap. You're not going to get any, res any results that you are looking for. The only way that this can protect you is by applying it in your life. Read it and then do it. This is your hardware firewall in Jesus' name. Second uh, firewall here that I want to talk about. Uh, how, many, how many knows what a firewall even is? I mean, now I've explained it. How many knows? Okay, five of you knows. How many don't know what a firewall is? All of you know what the next question is. I'm just going to skip it. How many are not going to raise their hand no matter what I ask? <laughs> you are not going to raise your hand? Okay, good. Thank you. Software firewall is the one that comes after the hardware firewall. A software firewall is installed on the actual computer. It's not a device. It's just something that you see on the computer. What is our software as Christians, as people, as human beings? What is your software? What would you call your software? It's your mind. It's your thoughts. What is going on in your mind today? What is your mind going to when your mind wanders off? Your mind is your software firewall. The question is, have you configured it properly? Because when you buy a computer at Best Buy, it comes with Windows firewall in it. You know what you need to do? You still need to activate it. You still need to configure it to your settings. So it's not enough to just have a mind and read the Word of God and think that that's it. Your mind is literally a battlefield. You need to configure it with the Word of God. And the beautiful thing is, if you ask anyone who's into internet security, a hardware firewall won't cover you 100%. But if you put a hardware firewall together with a software firewall, you're getting pretty high up there in security. My question to you today is, how do you configure your mind to defend against the attacks of the enemy? Attacks are coming. You will fall into different situations when opportunities will present themselves as a temptation. Are you going to fall for it or have you equipped your mind? How do we equip our mind? I believe personally that if you're going to jump into stormy water and you're on a boat and there are life vests available, that you put your life vest on, you tie it up and then you get in the water if you have to. 
your, your habits, your scriptural, spirit-filled habits as a Christian is your life vest when you're going through stormy waters. Your, your habits is literally your spiritual immune system. What's the habits that you have in your life? What's that one habit that you will never shake no matter what happens? I lost my job, but it doesn't matter. I will still wake up and pray. I, this happened to me. It doesn't matter. I will still wake up and pray. The habits that you develop when you're strong will keep you from falling when you are weak. The habits you develop when you're strong will keep you from falling when you're weak. Remember, you don't develop good habits when, when you're already in the stormy water. I went through a storm very recently. I was in Sweden for three years. Not physical storm, but definitely emotional storm. I, I made a mistake. I should have prepared myself more for stormy waters. So what happened to me, because the storm caught me unprepared, I wasn't ready for it. So what happened is I was already in the water before I was trying to get the life vest on. It takes forever and you might even not make it because you're not able to be steady and strong while putting on your life vest. There's a Navy SEAL proverb that I love a lot. It says like this, and it's been slightly modified for the sake of Christianity. It says, when temptation comes, when hardship happens, we don't rise to the occasion. We fall to the level of our training. Yeah. Yeah, come on, come on. What do you focus on as a Christian? I want to explain something to you, how to develop habits. When you are in, in good times, that's when you should develop good habits so that you can strictly follow those habits when you're in hard times. Nobody goes out hunting for lions and waits until the lion is face to face before they put bullets in the gun. You're going to put bullets from home in case you're overwhelmed, in case you're surprised. The devil loves throwing curveballs. He's going to present opportunities to you as a minister of God or as someone who's a Christian. Maybe someone is sneaking into your DMs. Maybe someone is sneaking into your DMs as a Christian. What's your habit? Do you open it and read it? What's your habit? Have, have levels of accountability. Have opportunity to where there are many different ways to do it. Either you just delete it and you don't read that stuff. Or your wife has access to your Instagram or whatever. How do you handle it when temptation comes? Maybe you're struggling with anger in the past and you thought you've overcome it. But you never actually worked on your temper. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Work on the weakest link. When you are in good times, when you're experiencing wonderful times, you're like, oh, praise God, praise God. Many of us want to continue working on our strong side, but our weak side doesn't get worked. It's your habits that lifts up your weak side. That means that someone may be a pastor for many years, being in the, in, the, in the limelight and preaching and setting people free. But one day when the devil attacks, they fall to the lowest level and suddenly right back down to where they were 20 years ago. You need to arm yourself. The devil is a smart person. He's stronger than you, smarter than you, wiser than you. And the worst thing, the devil has more time than you. You can't outlast the devil. The only good thing is that you have a father who's stronger than your enemy, wiser, smarter, and God has more time than the devil. <laughs> Develop good habits today when the storm is calm. I want to use an example here. Some of you uh, watch football and some of you watch soccer. Or I should say some of you watch football and some of you watch American football. Two distinctly different sports, okay? One, they play ball with their feet and one, they do all kinds of stuff. But it's football, okay? That's fine. That's fine. Uh, in football, in, okay, I'm going to be humble here. In, in soccer, in, in Europe, I know our Mexican people are with us because soccer is... They don't have American football there. It's, it's only one kind of football. In football or in soccer, there's a guy called Cristiano Ronaldo. How many know who Cristiano Ronaldo is? 
he's basically the world's best football player. And I know we have two camps. We have the Messi camp, we have the Cristiano Ronaldo camp. This case has been closed long ago, guys. One has a million MVPs, one has a couple, okay? You know. So this is Cristiano Ronaldo here. And for those of you who can't relate with what I'm talking about football, there's this other guy that I found online also. Apparently he plays football. <sighs> Never heard of him, but you guys know who it is. Praise God. So no offense here, okay? No offense. So with the first case of Cristiano Ronaldo, he is famous for having the highest, highest level that anyone have. Every footballer have high seasons and low seasons. Every footballer has good times and hard times on the field. And when a footballer has high times, Cristiano Ronaldo, his is way up there. I'm talking when he's in shape and when he's doing his thing, hat tricks, four goals per game, game winning stuff all the time. He's the hero. But the weakness of Cristiano Ronaldo, which he has worked on in, in later times, but from the beginning, the weakness that he had was that when he was in a low season, when he was out of shape a little bit, when he wasn't his best game, he was useless. His lowest level was lower than the lowest player on their team. He would walk around on the field, pass would come right next to him. He's like, I'm not here, I'm here. Give me a pass to my feet. You can't, you know, complaining. Someone is giving him, someone is shooting a ball and he's not even running. He's like walking and he's like, ah, it's too far. Throw it to me. He starts complaining and he's literally useless when he's bad. But many of his teammates, they have not as high of a highest level, but their lower level is very consistently in the middle. Working on your lowest level is how to stay consistent. It's not how fast you run today. It's how long you run today and tomorrow and the next day after. So I encourage you develop habits in your spiritual life. Set boundaries and practice now. So that when the storm comes, you're wearing your life vest already. You have to configure your software firewall. And now we're getting towards the end a little bit here. The third, uh, the third type of a firewall here. And this is actually my favorite one. I was going to tell him to play, but can you play? <laughs> then Angel can come down and play. I, I, I love to have the piano playing when I'm talking up here. I'm 100% sure that they have piano in heaven. Such heavenly music. I don't know about drums and bass if they have that in heaven, but piano for sure. <laughs> so uh, he's not here now, so I'm going to have to do the background sound myself. I'm not going to try right now, but the third type of a firewall as Christians and take note those of you who are into internet security you know what the third type is and it's the best one for us as Christians the third firewall is the one that makes the biggest difference and I'm gonna tell you right now when I found out I was googling this thing because I didn't even know it when I found out I was like yeah come on the third type of firewall is what they call a cloud-based firewall <laughs> cloud-based for Christians someone else is in charge of your protection you don't even need to work for it all you do is you pay a subscription and they'll protect you you don't need to do nothing and you know how we pay our subscription as Christians all God is asking is for your time pay your subscription to the cloud firewall by consistently spending time with God that is how you get the strongest protection. The three level, the three layers of protection in your spiritual journey. You have the word of God that will protect you because you're actually reading it and doing what it says. You have your habits developed in your mind so that you don't go off the rabbit trail as soon as opportunity arises. You have a cloud-based one where you spend time with God Almighty and He will protect you. So that most of those attacks, it's in your sleep. You don't even know that they're attacking you. You don't even know that someone cast a curse or a spell on you or whatever they did because God is protecting you from the arrows of the enemy. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it doesn't end there, people of God. It doesn't end there. Listen to this. It's not enough for us just to sit and be safe inside of our firewall. I've taught you now how, how you can be safe in your firewall. God bless you, brother. 
Thank you very much. How to be safe in the firewall. How to develop that security system. But it doesn't end there. God didn't just call you to say stay safe in your firewall. Stay safe in your city. I believe that we as human beings, we are like cities. If you would rise with me right now as we are getting to the end of the service. We as Christians, we are like cities. Some cities are big. Some cities are small. Some, big, some cities are a lot of sickness. Some sick cities, they have high crime rate. Some cities, they worship Jesus and some don't. Your life is like a city. And God has given you this wall to protect you from enemies coming from the outside. But it doesn't end there. God Almighty, everywhere in Scripture, the Scripture gives us one instruction. Go out and multiply. Spread your tent pegs, it says in Isaiah 54. Jesus said, go out to the whole world. Expand. When Abraham was up on the mountaintop, God told him, look around. As long as your eyes can see, it belongs to you. The first promise God said, go out and be fruitful. God has not called you to stay in your safe environment. He has called you for more than that. And our lives is like a city. Some of us have a lot of population, a lot of Bible verses in your heart, a lot of growth. You're growing up. Apostle Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I reasoned as a child, but when I grow up, I have left childish things behind me. Ephesians says that the, the fivefold ministry is there to make the body of Christ grow up and mature in the strength of God. Everything the Bible has promised us is grow, expand, get out there. And I found this Bible verse. God was leading me to it. In the book of Zechariah, I want to read it for you really quick. The book of Zechariah, chapter 2. And this is something that God showed me as I was pondering on this message. And, and, and I read from verse 1. When, then I raised my eyes and looked. And behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. So I said, where are you going? And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem. To see what is its width and what is its length. And that might be you. Maybe they're going out to measure you. To see your width and your length. To measure your authority in the spirit world. And there was the angel who talked with me going out. And another angel was coming out to meet him. Who said to him, run, speak to this young man. Saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. Because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. God is calling you today to expand your walls. The walls are not going to be able to, ex to, co to uh, contain you. The walls are not going to be able to keep you. Because you're growing in the Lord. In the power of His might. Jesus Christ grew up in strength and in the favor of the Lord. It's time to leave childish ways behind. It's time to grow up and realize it doesn't end with just being safe. There's more to the calling of God. And the last verse is my favorite. <laughs> verse 5 and it says, For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her. And I will be the glory in her midst. God is not calling you to sit in a city without firewall around you. He wants to turn that firewall to protect the inhabitants of the city from outward enemies. He wants to remove those walls and put himself as a wall of fire. When the Lord is a wall of fire around you, you will stop playing defensive Christianity and you will step out in the game, join the ranks and begin to play offensive Christianity. The devil is a roaring lion and he's out there. You and I have a calling. We can't just sit in our cities. The Lord wants to convert your firewall to a wall of fire. Today is the day for that. Maybe this message is touching you right now. Maybe you have been a complacent Christian. Maybe you have been sitting safely in your environment. And you have that defensive mindset. Oh, it's so hard for me. Oh, the devil is attacking me. Step out! I'm not your firewall only. I want to be your wall of fire. And the wall of fire will consume anything that gets close to you. Are you ready right now? I want to pray with you right now. If you are here today and you feel